Lesson 10, Distributive Property. We are going to discuss how to break down and put together numbers in different ways to make it so much easier for us to understand how grouping works. We can say that we have three straight lines with five boys in each line and that we have three straight lines with seven girls in each line which means if I wanted to combine these, I would say three straight lines of the boys, which is equal to five, plus three straight lines of the girls, which is equal to seven, and then I can work it out that way. Another way of looking at this, however, is to say that I have three straight lines of five boys and seven girls. Now that's going to look a little bit different because that's gonna be three straight lines of five boys plus seven girls. Another way that we can look at this is that we have three straight lines of 12 students. And that's going to look like three times 12. Now all of these ways say the exact same thing but they're just different ways of expressing exactly what we're working with. Let's walk through this problem just like we would to prove any other point that we're making in math. When we talk about three straight lines of boys and three straight lines of girls, we have three times five, which is the number of boys, that gives us the value of 15. Then we have three times seven, which is the number of girls, and that gives us a value of 21. Now we remember according to PEMDAS, we have multiplication, addition, and multiplication. So it's our responsibility to make sure that these are done first and second because we're working from left to right. Now, as we continue down, we only move down that addition because we've done both of the multiplications already. 15 plus 21 gives us a value of 36 students in total, five boys in each of the three rows and seven girls in each of the three rows. Now, another way of looking at this is to say that we have lines, three lines of boys and girls. So we have the boys, which represent the five here, and the seven, which is the girls, and we can combine those two together to give us 12 students because we remember with PEMDAS, whenever we're working any of our order of operation problems, we always start with what's in parentheses, and that's an addition, so we do that before we do the multiplication. All right, so five plus seven is 12, 12 times three is 36 as well. So we've just shown a different way of expressing the exact same information, but one is more specific than the other. Lastly, we have three lines of students. Now this one is the least specific because we don't know how many of those students are boys and we don't know how many of those students are girls. We just know using this multiplication problem that we get a total of 36 students. So distributive property is simply a way of looking at a problem in a different way. Can we make it easier to understand? Can we break those numbers down? Let's use distributive property to simplify. Now, when we have numbers together, for example, here we have 63, we can decompose those numbers because what this really means is that we have six tens and three ones. We can separate those from one another and that will give us 60 plus three. And then we can do our distributive property there. Now, the way I like to show distributive property is showing them with arrows. So that's the easiest way to know that I am multiplying these. So five times 60 is 300, Th five times three is 15. Our last operation is to add. So when we add those together, we get 315. Now, sometimes we have dollars and cents. And here's an example of if we had six times four dollars and fifty cents or four and fifty hundredths, five cents. 
we can break this 450 into two separate parts, the dollars portion, which is this four here, and the cents portion, which is this 50 hundredths, all right? When we do that, we're going to do distributive property in order to work this out, and that just means multiplication. So six times four is 24, six times 50 cents is three. When we add those together, which is our last operation, we get 27. So using distributive property is a really great way that we can break the math down into simpler parts for just ease of mental math. Let's make these problems as easy as possible. Now I want you to hit pause and I want you to try this problem on your own before we continue. There are 50 people walking in a fundraising event. Each participant walks five and three tenths miles. How many miles are walked in total? All right, welcome back. This one should have been a great one for you to show what you know. So what are you breaking down in this situation? Well, we know that each participant walks five and three tenths of a mile, and we know that there are 50 participants walking. So that is going to be a multiplication for us. And if we wanted to know the miles in total, we call that M. All right. So how are we going to break this down? Well, let's use this as one whole and then our decimal values there in the tenths place. So let's separate it that way. And we're going to take this five and move it here and multiply it by that 50. And then we're gonna take this point three and move it here and multiply it by that 50 again. All right, so we're sharing, we're distributing our value to each component. That's what we're doing. So we have five times 50, that's 250. And we have three tenths times 50, which is 15. Our last operation is to add those together. And that gives us a total of 265 total miles walked by all of